Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Now, if you've seen other videos on my channel, then you are probably noticing that things look, well, a little bit different. The thing is, I'm actually reorganizing my home office slash studio, so it's currently a work in progress. What you see right now is not the final way that it's going to look. But I recently had a conversation with Tom from Lawrence Systems. He has an awesome YouTube channel that you should definitely check out if you haven't already done so. But he and I were talking and he let me know that he created a 3D printed Raspberry Pi rack and he decided to bring it over to the studio to show me and he actually gave it to me so I installed it in my rack which I will show you in this video. But anyway, let's go ahead and bring Tom into the studio so he can tell us about the 3D printed rack that he set up for me and we'll get right into it. All right, Tom, tell us about what you are holding in your hands right now. 12 Raspberry Pis. 12 and, Raspberry Pis. In a rack. And this is a really cool... Not in a rack the country, but in a rack. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so we, what we did was, in, there's a challenge. Jay had this idea that he wanted to build a cluster of Raspberry Pis. Yep. But stacking them all over the place just looks messy and isn't cool and isn't very home labby. Right. And, uh, but building a 2U rack mount and 3D printing it so it will hold 12 Raspberry Pis. And then Jay has them all configured with the uh, PoE hats, which is yep. also really cool. So this is going to be PoE yep. powered. means we can have a switch just below this to provide PoE power and network connectivity simultaneously and then power this massively powerful cluster of Pis. Because, yeah. you know, it's Pi times 12. This is so yep. cool. One of the things I really like about this is that each Pi is just a tray. It's yes. just like this. And you don't have to have 12 pies. You could have three, you could have two. And then as you go, maybe every two or three months, you add another one. And you could just keep adding on to it, which yes. is great for a Kubernetes cluster because that's the whole point. When you're, when you're the ones you have are full, you know, they're, they're overloaded because you have too much going on. Add another one, spread the load out, and then you just simply slot it right into it. And that way you have a cluster that can grow as your needs grow in your home lab, which is one of the many things I love about this. Yeah, it's kind of a cool. I mean, we went all out and put all 12 in right away. We right. know that's not going to be for everybody. But if you have a couple different, you know, a couple to start with, hey, start building them out, start printing them out there. And this whole system now, it does not have much tension holding them in. Right. But it's not that big of a deal because generally speaking, because of the way you hold it like this, when you rack mount it, they're not going to slide out. And you're going to have the cords there. So if you do slide them out, they're dangling from a cord. So they're not going to flop around too much. Right. Now, the other important thing, you know, we do have some heat sinks on so we do we do have them passively cooled so mm -hmm. that will limit how much jay can push or overclock them but generally speaking as long as you have a rack that has decent airflow to pull from front to back like all the other devices do you should be perfectly fine you can also because this is such a short depth on this mm -hmm. put other fans behind it they do make rack mounted 19 inch rack mounted fan arrays that you can probably build and maybe even 3d print some holders for to if we needed to pull more air you'll have to yep. keep an eye on the cluster to determine the uh heat dissipation on right. here to make sure it doesn't get out of hand i think you were saying this color changes yes so we happen to have some of the color changing filament and the color changing filament is really novel i mean if it gets in the sun or something where it gets a little bit too hot i'm not positive because we haven't assembled it and turned it on yet whether or not there'll be enough heat generated by the raspberry pies themselves to cause the color change effect but it was just one of those added little things and i thought it'd be cool if it does work a visual element to go hey the yeah. uh, pie rack is too I hot <laughs> yeah i love this rack a lot so it's going to be mounted in the rack now you're not seeing it right now you will in b-roll though and I'm rearranging the office. It looks different. And just so people are aware, I don't upload the videos in the same order they were recorded in. So you're going to see some videos with a new layout in my office. And then, of course, some yeah. of the older ones until that time's out. But um, I'm trying. I'm going to try to get this in the frame if I can. And you guys will see it. So I think that it's just so amazing to just, you know, invent something or create something like this. Because when it comes to home lab. The only thing that limits you is your creativity, also your budget, but we don't want to talk yeah. about budget. Just, budget. just spend all your we'll, money. We'll pretend that you um, don't have a budget. Let's pretend, yeah, spare <laughs> no expense. I mean, if, if that was uh, the case, you could spare no expense. But 
you could add on to it. Like I said earlier, I think that's amazing. And if you have a rack, it, it doesn't even need to be like a really deep rack. It could just be like even one of those audio visual things that are very cheap. You could just mount it to that. That's good. You, and I think that's awesome. A lot of people ask me, you know, which rack you should go with. And there's been one in my videos for a long time. But if you have access to a 3D printer, I think this is a great solution. Yeah, it, you know, it filament's relatively cheap, so it's not like this was too expensive to build. Uh, there's a couple screw kits you need, and we'll of course have links yep. down below to all the parts you need to get this going. There's yep. not there's not too much to it in parts. Most of yeah. the expense is buying all the Raspberry Pis. Now, one yep. of the other purposes of this is building out a uh, compute project like this is a great yep. learning experience because really this is, is substantially less expensive but in concept, the same as you may see if you're working at a larger scale, uh, building out a large Kubernetes cluster, learning some of the, how you load yep. balance applications, how things fail over between nodes. That's all part of uh, stuff Jay's going to be working on yeah. for the tutorials. This is just the holder yeah. for it. I did the I, holding part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have some videos already and some some that are coming, but it'll grow with you because you, you might be thinking, well, wow, I'm just starting out. Kubernetes, really? I don't think I'm ready to, for that. It doesn't matter. You can have Apache running on, on one Pi and then maybe... Um, another app running on another on another one. It doesn't have to be Kubernetes. That's just a really cool thing that you can do. But then, as you add more apps, even if they're just if it is if it's not a cluster, you just keep adding pies as your needs grow, and then your talents grow, your skill set grows. Maybe then you do want to check out Kubernetes. Well, there you go. You can just slot each individual worker node in there, and you know from the controller node, you know being the first one, and you're all set. You have a cluster. So I think that's um, I, yeah. I I just love this a lot. This is just it's just cool seeing them all. That's part of, that's part of my excitement. We had a lot of fun assembling this and everything else. Yeah. But then you know the awesome part is going to be this part when we actually see, see it in action. Seeing it, yep. Seeing it, yep. After I put this in the rack and record the B roll, you, you'll also see like plugging plugging in an Ethernet cable, and then the thing comes to life. You don't have to have power over Ethernet because it looks to me like you can get the power cables. Yes, it'd be like right here coming off the the top of it. But so it's, if it's in the Really, you'd want some clearance. Yeah, you'd right want there. some clearance, but ideally you really yeah. want to do these with the PoE hats. Yep, and I, I, the ones that I've, I've been buying, I haven't tried the, I think Raspberry Pi has an official one now. Yeah. I haven't tried that one. There's just been this really cheap one I've been using for probably two, three years now, and it works. It works. That's it works kind for of the me. Solution. So <laughs> uh, I'll have links to that in the show notes as well. Um, pretty much everything you see here, I assume there's probably like a diagram yeah, for, for this. Yeah, well, we there? have a we have the maker. Uh, yep. It's on Thingiverse, and that'll be in the links down below, so you can download the schematics and the instructions of everything uh, related to it. So you can build it yourself if you need to. We awesome. didn't do any tweaking to this. Uh, there's not anything real special. It uh, was printed, as far as you know. And if there were any notes, I'll make sure because my staff does the 3D printing, uh, not directly me. We'll make sure any of the notes, if there are any yep. special instructions, will be down below. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add about it? No, that's about it. I'm just excited to see it in. Get oh yeah, we're gonna get this mounted in into the rack. It's gonna be amazing. So, that's the cool part. Um, yeah, that that's that's where it all comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. Absolutely, and a rack with pies comes together. Yay! <laughs> I really appreciate Tom coming out to the studio and setting me up with a three D printed rack for my Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster. That was really cool. Now I ran into a little issue, unfortunately, with the new Pi rack. And it's an issue that I thought might come up, but I wasn't sure. My previous rack had fans on it, and this one doesn't, so I was very concerned about heat. And sure enough, when I checked out the temps on the Raspberry Pis, they were all throttling. They were well over the throttling temperature. That's not good. But thankfully, it was very easy to fix. So I have one of the units right here in the tray, and this portion here is actually the Power Over Ethernet hat that I've been using. Now, notice that there's no fan anywhere here. There's a heat sink, but there's no fan. And that wouldn't be a problem in my old rack because, again, that rack did have fans. This 3D printed rack that Tom provided does not have fans. So thankfully, this issue was very easy to fix. I just wanted to mention this because in my Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster video, I recommended this particular power over Ethernet hat right here and I can't recommend it for use in the 3D printed rack because it's going to get so hot that it's going to throttle. Now, the easy solution is simply replacing the Power Over Ethernet hat with one that has a fan. This one right here, I actually purchased from Micro Center, and so far it's working out very well. 
The temperatures are in the 40s rather than the upper 60s and actually 70s like it was before, and this works out very well for me. And here it is out of the box. As you can see, it has a fan right here. So it's definitely a better fit than the one that I had on my Raspberry Pis previously, and this is the one that I decided to go with. This particular one comes from a company called 52 Pi. At the time I'm recording this video, I wasn't able to find a link to purchase this online. But I'll have another look, and if I do find a link to this, I'll throw it in the description. But this works out really well in the 3D printed rack, and I'll show you why. So here I have the Raspberry Pi with the hat removed, and you'll notice that I have only one of the nuts attached, this one right here. The other three are not tightened down. And the reason for that is because the Power Over Ethernet hat itself as you can see here, has three posts. So that works out. As an aside, the screws that I'm using here are the ones that Tom provided, not the ones that came with the Power Over Ethernet hat that I purchased, because those screws are not long enough to go all the way through and still come out the top. So you'll definitely need to use the ones that Tom provided me, which I'll have a link for in the description down below. Simply just grab the hat right here and just set it on top. Make sure everything is lined up and gently work it down as much as you can. And then you just simply tighten these little screws right here. That'll screw it into the board. You get the idea. And once everything is done, everything should be tightened down. And then once you have everything tightened down, this is what it looks like. And I think that this particular Power Over Ethernet hat really complements this 3D printed rack because it just works out so well. The posts that come with the hat itself are a perfect fit for the screws, and this hat actually helps tighten it to the tray, so it's definitely a win, but best of all, it keeps it cool. We have a fan right here, and that's awesome. So overall, I consider this project a win. Sure, I had to replace the Power Over Ethernet hats that I had on my Pies, but let's be honest, I probably should have chose one with a fan anyway, and it worked out very well in the end, so I won't complain. The 3D printed rack is a permanent part of my server rack, and I'm really excited to have it, so I really appreciate Tom coming out here and helping me set it up. That was awesome. So, subscribe if you haven't already done so, check out Tom's channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.